Gaming is like an all-you-can-eat buffet. A wide variety of genres on display awaiting your arrival so you can dive in head first. Or in this case, controller first. To be honest, I don't know where I'm going with this analogy, but I'm sure you get the drift. As trophy hunters, you sometimes lose yourself to the grind and don't take the time to appreciate the game's story, graphics and overall enjoyment. No sooner that platinum trophy pop, we are already deleting the game and loading up the next while reading the trophy list on PSN profiles. However, now and then we will come across a game that gets our full attention, where grinding for those trophies is a pleasure and not a chore. A game so perfect that once the dust has settled, you wish you could do it all over again. So here are another 7 games that I personally played and platinumed that I wish I could do again. So let's jump right into it. The Gardens Between Indie puzzle games are a dime a dozen, though very few radiate so much charm as The Gardens Between. An adventure puzzle video game developed by Australian studio The Voxel. It is a surreal puzzle adventure that follows best friends Arena and Friend as they fall into a mysterious world of beautiful garden islands and have to manipulate time to solve puzzles and discover the secrets of each island. I'm not big on puzzle games as I have the IQ of a baked potato, but the art style, music and gameplay had me hooked from the very get-go. I'm not gonna lie and will admit that I used a guide to get through this as some of the time-bending puzzles are real head scratches. With said guide, the game can be completed and platinumed in just over an hour. The trophy list is full with some clever miscellaneous trophies and nothing is missable thanks to chapter select. If you are into these types of games, I cannot recommend this enough. I enjoyed it so that I actually went back and got the platinum a second time. Though for some sections I had to use the guide again as I couldn't remember what needed to be done. IQ of a potato and memory of a fish. That's me alright. Dragon Ball Z Kakarot Who here in the infancy didn't try to go Super Saiyan or practice the Kame... the Kame... Kameha... 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 Kameha or practice the Kamehameha in the pool. Be honest, I wasn't the only one. Please God, don't let me be the only one. Dragon Ball Z is a household name nowadays and has several games for each console generation. The Budokai series being my all-time favorite. Enter Dragon Ball Z Kakarot, an action role-playing game developed by CyberConnect2 and published by Bandai Namco Entertainment, released on the 16th of January 2020. The game didn't really call to me at first, but one day, discount bin shopping, I happened to come across it. I needed a new game to play, so I thought, why the hell not, and took it home. The first two hours of the game had me second guessing this purchase, and I started thinking to myself, would this be on the list of games I failed to platinum? However, the game didn't take long after that to win me over. Once I understood the game mechanics, I was yelling along Goku as I went Super Saiyan and Kamehameha hard them fools into the ground. The trophy list was surprisingly enjoyable to seek out and do all but one trophy, which I found a bit tedious. Shenron's favorite, which is to summon Shenron 10 times. For those of you who know Dragon Ball lore, you can see where this is going and why it would be so tedious. But for those who don't, I'll give you the TLDR. Shenron is a magical dragon that will grant you any wish you desire in the DBZ universe. And how you go about summoning him is by collecting the 7 Dragon Balls that are scattered all over the map. Once all the balls are collected, Shenron summoned and wish granted, the Dragon Balls fly up in the air and are then scattered all over the map again. So doing this 10 times can work on your nerves a little bit. Another trophy that I thought would be a stick in the mud but turned out to be pretty easy, air quotations, was Down with the Demon Realm. This comes available after defeating 30 villainous parties. Once done, the super boss Mira becomes available to fight and is level 100. Now, when I read about this on the trophy list, it gave off the impression that this dude was no joke and you had to bring your A-game to confront him. 
Nonetheless, I actually found him very easy and defeated him on my first try. I do imagine there are some factors that help immensely with this. I do believe I was level 105 when I did this, and I also had Goku and Vegeta's fusion at my disposal. Also, add to that 5 full meals that I had before the fight to buff my stats. So yeah, I bitch slapped the F out that full, and the perfect way to get the platinum. FYI, you can auto pop the platinum for the PS5 version, which is free, by transferring your save over. So, two platinums for the price of one. Nice. You are number one. Resident Evil 2. The original Resident Evil 2 that came out on the PlayStation 1 in 1998 is one of my favorite and most cherished games I have played and own. So you can imagine how much of a nut I busted when the remake was announced. This was a big deal for Resident Evil fans as the franchise was on a bit of a decline. Though to be fair, Resident Evil 7 which was released two years prior did bring back some faith to the fans. So there I was, running around Raccoon City like a headless chicken screaming and shooting at everything that moved. It was glorious, terrifying as hell, but glorious. This was just before my trophy hunting days, so once the game was completed, I put it on my shelf with the rest of my collection. One year later, full swing into my trophy hunting and perfect for Halloween, I decided to go for the platinum of Resident Evil 2. Now this platinum is no easy chore and at first look at the trophy list, I'll admit that I was a bit put off. Several playthroughs, beating the game on hard, not using the item box, no healing during a playthrough, bro, WTF. This seemed impossible. Yet I sat down, put on all the lights, and looked up guides to be able to achieve these zombified tasks. And in all honesty, it wasn't so bad. I found an incredibly useful guide that helped me achieve the majority of the daunting trophies in one or two playthroughs and was extremely informative and entertaining to watch. This game has the perfect level of challenge and I think trophy hunters who attempt this platinum will agree. Plus it has a free upgrade to the PS5 version which auto pops the platinum. Another 2 for 1. Ape Escape, another PS1 classic that released in 1999, the first game to require a controller with DualShock to be able to play as you controlled our protagonist Spike with the analog sticks, a first for the time. Two decades later and Ape Escape once again is able to grace our 4K screens thanks to it being playable through PlayStation Premium. And to add that cherry on the cake comes with its own platinum trophy which is very achievable. Ape Escape's trophy list basically comes down to collect a certain amount of coins, catch a certain amount of monkeys, and unlock all gadgets. You don't even have to 100% the game, which is always a plus. The only downside that I can think of and is important to mention are the controls and camera angles for this game. Still plays like its 1999 counterpart, and if you're not someone that grew up playing games like this, your experience could be more frustrating than usual. Though I still enjoyed it and would recommend you give it a try, even if it's just to see how games were back then. Resident Evil 8. Hey, another Resident Evil game. As we all know, Resident Evil 7 took the series in a bit of a different direction, giving us a new protagonist and a first person's perspective. I however didn't take it too kindly to this change. Resident Evil needs to be played in third person goddammit. So I never did play 7 for this reason. Along comes Resident Evil 8 and the same story. Same old Mr. Winters and first person. So again I passed on playing this installment of the franchise. However out of nowhere Capcom comes along and announces the Rose DLC which comes with a third person view for the campaign. No need to say that that got my attention and interest for the game up. So I went snooping into the second hand bin at my local game and there it was. A PlayStation 5 steelbook copy of Resident Evil 8. At a delectable price. Rolling up to the tilt to pay, the guy behind the counter who I know through coming here a lot and chatting games with does me a solid and sells me a brand new copy for the price of the second hand one. Steelbook edition, of course. 
Game and DLC installed, I make my way through the Romanian countryside with Mr. Ethan Winters, and you know what? I had one hell of a time going for this Platinum. By this time, I had Platinumed Resident Evil 2, 3, and 4, so I was pretty familiar on the Resident Evil trophy lists. They all mostly have the same type of trophies. A knife run only trophy. Finish the story in 3 hours or less. Don't spend more than X amount. Difficulty set trophies, but here they are stackable, you get the idea. There were only two trophies that I would say are a wrench in my cogs, and those would be completing the game on the hardest difficulty. The Heisenberg boss fight, specifically the tank section of that fight. Here you take on the boss in a tank. Cool. Yes? No. Here you can take a maximum of three hits, and if your tank is destroyed, you die and have to start the whole fight again. Add to that that Heisenberg moves extremely fast and your shots have to be pinpoint to be able to stun him. It's a cocktail for frustration. Mercenaries mode can also be a tedious task as you're required to get S rank on the four standard maps and then S rank again on the harder version of said maps. This looks daunting as well but is very manageable with Chris. Video on my channel if you're interested. Trover saves the universe. Coming off the success of Rick and Morty, it was only a matter of time before Justin Roiland tried his hands at implementing that humour in a game. Roiland founded Squanch Games and Trover Saves the Universe was born. The game is pretty on par with the humour of Rick and Morty and its trophy list follows very closely. Some good examples of this is bouncing a ball 25 times in your apartment, killing all the pets of an NPC, listening to two NPCs arguing and then witnessing a crime, and of course, killing every killable NPC in the game. But it's not really wrong if there are jokes and fourth wall breaks behind it, right? Right? Though staying true to annoying form, the trophy where you are required to shoot 100 balls of paper into a basketball hoop is just as tedious and annoying as it would be to have Morty moaning in your ear. A short and sweet platinum that I'm sure you will enjoy, especially if you're a fan of this type of humor. Hey, it's Mr. Mises, look at me. I can't do the voice, I apologize. So I need you to shut the fuck up and do what the fuck I tell you to do. Alex Kidd in Miracle World. Alex Kidd is a game that made me go from pulling my hair out to loving it in the end. This might apply differently to you, but this was my case. The original Alex Kidd was released for the Master System in 1986. A remake for the game was released in 2021, where you have the ability to swap from the updated graphics to the original style of the game by just pressing one button. The first playthrough of this game had me at my wits end, as if you lose all your lives, it is game over and you lose all your money and items that you have on you. There is an infinite life mode, but at the time this would void certain trophies. I have been told that this is not the case anymore, but be aware of this if you decide to go for this platinum. Now, getting game over is not the problem, progress wise. You'll just restart the level and off you go. The problem is losing all your money, as there is a level where you need to buy a helicopter to be able to reach a collectible. So losing all your money before this ruins your collectible run. Two playthroughs will be needed already for this, and we all know that resetting a run is never a good time. I would suggest a normal run first, ignoring the collectibles and not buying anything, as there is a trophy for that, and in the second run where you now know how the game mechanics work and enemies function, go for the collectibles. My second run was substantially more enjoyable due to the fact that I understood the game more. Don't let this platformer fool you, it has its decent share of challenge. A short game that you could probably finish in one afternoon. 17 trophies and an ultra rare platinum, I would recommend it, but read on that trophy list to avoid a bad time. Video on my channel if you're interested. Well, those are the games that I would platinum again, if I could. Some I actually have, so that gives more weight to my recommendations. What are the games and platinums that you wish you could do again? Leave the comment down below. Thanks for watching and making it this far in the video. I hope you enjoyed watching and listening to my ranting. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already. Feel free to check out my other videos on my channel and I'll see you all next time.